Well, thank you for joining me on Side by Side. And here we are in Proverbs chapter 6 today. We're going to look at the first 20, the first 19 verses today. That's where we are. And we have three negative pictures that are given to us to teach three positive things. And they're all very practical and they're very personal. The first one is about haste. And the second one is about hesitancy. And the third one, well, I think I'll leave the third one for the next day. It's about harmony. But we'll maybe look at the first two. Let's think about this question of haste. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, or if you've trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. This is talking about haste. Now, there is a place in the Bible, clearly, and the Gospel urges us to be kind and generous. And we've been thinking about that in other parts of Proverbs. There's also a place to be foolish and to be advised about what foolishness is. We've already seen that spirit of generosity and giving. But then there's this point about being responsible. The gospel is not dressed up in Sunday clothes, but the gospel is also dressed up in work clothes. The gospel is not just about our eternal future, but our present everyday life. It's not just about our relationships to God, but the consequence of that relationship and its effect on our relationship to ourselves and to others. Gospel wisdom impacts all of life. And so what is the way forward in this place? Hesitancy, sorry, haste. The person seems to have got into a position where very quickly and not maybe thinking very deeply, they give guarantees that they ought not to have done. We can under understand how someone appears and they present you with a situation and you feel very much obligated. I've Sometimes this has happened in congregational life. Someone has come, uh, they need to rent a property, they need someone to go guarantor. You don't know the person very well. We've had this happen from time to time. Or one part of you really wants to fix their problem. <laughs> but another part of you says, well, I don't really know this person well enough to know if I can do that. And it is a very wise thing to say to anybody, well, I need some time to think about this. I think that's a rescuing phrase. Let me think about this. If only we had said those words more times, we would have saved ourselves much trouble. And so what is the way out? Well, backing out is never easy. But someone who has a gospel heart has grace to find themselves in a place where they can humble themselves and even take it on the chin, as it were. They may feel foolish, but they know they can come home to a heavenly father who will say, that was well done. There's a sense in which we can see a picture of the grace of God for us in this, isn't there? For Jesus did stand surety for us. Now he knew, he knew that we would fail. He knew we had failed. He knew that we'd got into such a debt mess of sin, but it didn't stop him. So that whenever those words on the cross are cried out, translated, it is finished. Those words mean, literally, they mean paid in full. And that's what God has done for us. He literally has, in his son, Christ has paid the debt to his father for our sin. Now that is a, a, a wonderful picture for us, but it does not in any way diminish the fact that we should still say, let me go and think about this. The second negative picture that we're given to encourage us to a positive behaviour is found in the second section of this, which is from verse 6, verse, yeah, verse six down to uh, verse 15. And it's really the picture of the ant. A little animal, a tiny, small animal that God uses to teach us a lesson. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. I'm using the New Living Translation. Learn from their ways and become wise. 
Although they have no prince, governor, or ruler to make them work, they labour hard all summer, gathering food all winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep, and when will you wake up? A little extra sleep? A little more slumber? A little folding of the hands to rest? And then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. What a wonderful graphic picture that is, isn't it? You so each of us, you see, have areas where we just can't or we don't want to be motivated to act. It could be all sorts of things. I mean, for me, I know my areas where I am hesitant, where I need a good kick in the backside to get me moving. And I thank, I thank Joan at times. She keeps reminding me of certain things that I am doing, should do, need to do. Now, maybe for someone, it's phone calls to certain people you've put off. Maybe it's DIY or tidying. Or maybe it's even personal care. You just can't be bothered. There are many things Proverbs clearly says, and Jesus strongly affirms, that are about this sort of reality, cause and effect, consequences. And it's a powerful, powerful message. Even though we know by looking at others that if you do that, it's going to have a bad outcome. Why do we do it ourselves? And here we are looking at the ant and seeing its amazing little self-motivated, un controlled by any outside force that moves at a pace in all circumstances. Well, one thing in life seems very clear, that no matter how gifted a person is, no matter how much potential they have, or even in church terms, no matter how wonderful a church seems, how many opportunities it has, no matter what its history is, hard work has a great deal to do with the outcome. It is true that we are not saved by good works, not ours, but the works of our Lord Jesus for us, but we are saved to do good works. And I have noticed this, that those who invest themselves in working at their faith, in working at their prayer, in studying scripture, in working with joy for their Lord, they seem to make so many great strides. They make great progress. Jesus did use the illustration, didn't he, of the giving the men the different number of talents, the five, the two, and the one. And then when he comes back to see how they've done, how the five and the two have worked really hard, and they've added five and two more, the man with the one talent, well, he buries his in the ground. He is condemned. You see, we are urged to use what we have. I don't think it's a matter of choice even. I think it's a question of survival. Some say, I don't really want much, so I really have no inclination or drive. I'm just content with really just at this level. I don't want to get too serious about it. Well, I think that's a disobedience to the great gifts that God has given us. Because a gospel-hearted person will have an inner motivation to be up and doing for the glory of God and the good of others, if not for themselves. And this is not some Protestant work ethic, as some might have called it. This is a Christian embracing God's good gifts for his glory. Well, for some, even in lockdown times, it would be easy just to slack off in so many areas. But it might just be the call we need to get up and to be at it in some other neglected areas, perhaps, in our correspondence. Maybe in caring for other people in ways that we have not been able to in the past. In personal study, maybe going to do an online course or a little conference. I've found one or two that I can do, and I don't need to leave this study. And who knows what other things that God will show to us if we would just ask him. Yes, there are two, these are two wonderful pictures for us today. And I hope that they'll be encouraging to you because God gives us these not to condemn us. No, no. He gives us these so that, as it says in verse 23, that these things will be like a lamp and a light to show us the way of living that God has planned for us. Well, tomorrow, God willing, we'll have a look at the third one in Proverbs 6. 
and the Lord bless you until we catch up then.